internment ceremony set into motion a new history of internment with two individuals being returned to their shipmates on this afternoon. In the history of the internment here at the USS Arizona and its memorial, there are now 39 names. Today we will add two more. We have both families here who have come long distances along with friends and also partners from the Arizona Reunion Group. Among the group here are Arizona survivors as well, some of which are at this moment still contemplating internment themselves. For those of us who are here today on this special moment, that is not only celebrated by their families, but by the United States Navy, who is now aboard. For us in the National Park Service, the stewardship of this moment is not lost on us. And among the people that have made this possible are individuals from each family, integration with the Navy, integration with the National Park Service. The choir that will be accompanying us today, Dartmouth Sing Choir, has come great distance to be part of this and to honor these families. So they will be part of our musical accompaniment this, for this service. To welcome all of you, I ask that Superintendent Jacqueline Ashwell please come up for remarks. Good afternoon. The greatest expression of love is illustrated in the willingness to lay down one's life for another. There are causes that sometimes bring individuals together for something much bigger than themselves. We have gathered at this place, at this time, to remember the lives of those individuals that were lost on this day 75 years ago. There was a great loss of life. But out of this tragic event, individuals came together for a common cause, willing to die for each other, if necessary, to defend the nation so that their posterity would live free. For those who survived that great conflict, they went on to live inconspicuous lives, many times saying nothing about their experiences of war. But when veterans were alone together, they would talk about the experiences that could only be shared with one another. They were abandoned brothers, and in some cases sisters. They had, as Oliver Wendell Holmes said, shared the incommunicable experience of war. They had felt passion of life to its top. In their youth, their hearts had been touched by fire. The crew of the USS Arizona had a special bond that would last a lifetime and beyond. On behalf of the Department of the Interior, National Park Service, World War II Valor in the Pacific National Monument. We would like to welcome you to the interment of John D. Anderson, Clarendon and Robert Petrick, as they rejoin their shipmates on this 75th anniversary of the attack on Oahu. The crew members are eternal brothers, and they will be together forever. We are here to remember these two individuals and their shipmates who gave or were willing to give their lives for something far greater 
than any individual. But in a greater sense, we remember and celebrate their lives and their commitment to their families, their communities, and to their country. May we continue the legacy left by these men who are willing to die for one another. Good afternoon, everyone. I did a special welcome to the families of Mr. Anderson, and Mr. Hendrick, also fellow flag officers, senior officers, enlisted leaders, ladies and gentlemen, family. No grave site is more sacred to the United States Navy than the USS Arizona. And this memorial, so stark yet so hopeful, communicates its beauty in the elegant concept of peace after being conceived as, after such a terrible but necessary war. Through vigilance and readiness, I stand here as a link in the unbroken chain of citizens who volunteered to wear the cloth of our nation and swear to you that we are fully committed to preventing another world war. Today, we honor John Anderson and Clarendon Claire Hetrick, men who lived full and meaningful lives. Their lives were like journeys to the top of the highest mountain. From that pinnacle, they could see the full and perspective of a life well lived. Yet like all Pearl Harbor survivors, they carried the heavy burden on their journey. When John and Claire went to war in 1941, they were very young men. So here's some perspective. When John Anderson and Claire Hetrick joined the military, the young veterans that they met served in the Spanish-American War and in World War I. And the really old timers that they met, these guys they met in the 1940s, were Civil War veterans. Think about that for a moment. John Anderson was born before women had received the right to vote. And Claire was born the same year they invented, wait for this, the traffic signal. And the cities of those days needed traffic lights to accommodate the growing number of Ford Model Ts, which at the time was the cutting edge of the technology of the era. Early in their lives, both John and Claire witnessed the birth of rocket power, radar, television, and the ultimate standard that describes the best of everything, that's right, sliced bread. I just can't let this one go. In other words, best memories as young men these guys had were literally the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> John and Claire saw other great things in their lifetime. ATMs, personal computers, lasers, the internet, smartphones. I could go on, but you get my point. And speaking of great change from the sailor's point of view, 1941 as young sailors, in the years that followed, they personally witnessed the end of heavy battleship warfare, and the beginning of integrated air, <coughs> submarine, surface, and amphibious warfare. They saw the generation, excuse me, their generation saw the rise of nuclear power, and they witnessed the entire Cold War. The heavy burden they took on here in Pearl Harbor changed their lives, but they know they were going to change the world. Sailors who served in World War II, exemplified by USS Arizona sailors, brought about a lasting peace now more than seven decades. This piece spawned great innovations and intentions and inventions. John and Claire helped create a new world, uh, helped create a nation that is dedicated to order, justice, stability, and peace. John and Claire fought for these things. Freedom, reconciliation, and most of all, they fought, they fought for their brothers on USS Arizona. And 
much fueled by their praise, remember Pearl Harbor. As we prepared for the events this week, we spoke about our commitment to honor the past and inspire the future. Today, right here, in this hallowed place, we demonstrate that commitment. All Americans benefited from the greatest generation's humble service and sacrifice. Today, we are honored to stand on the mountaintop with both families and for a few moments, reflect on the breadth and depth of John and Claire's lives. We can see the panorama of peace, stability, and prosperity that they and their generation gave us. Today, John rejoins his twin brother, Jake. And both John and Claire rejoin their brothers and shipmates here on U.S. Arizona. We wish them a warm aloha, and we offer our love and respect to their dear families. So for our dearly departed sailors, now hear this, now hear this. Petty officers Hendricks and Anderson, shore leave is canceled. Report back to your appointed place of duty and assume the watch on USS Arizona. family, the immediate party of the Anderson family, I will come out and uh, the Admiral and I will accompany you into the Shrine Room to begin the procession of the Earth. The chaplain also will.
middle service for Clarendon in our country. We'll begin with prayer in the chapel. Chaplain and Admiral Fuller, please join me for the procession of the air. family of the Hetry family, please step forward.
taps.
now ask that Superintendent Ashwell, Admiral Fuller, and the chaplain please step forward. Representatives that went with us down to the uh, internment site to come with us inside the shrine room for the unveiling of the names. Call upon the chaplain to initiate our benediction. Let us pray. Eternal Father, strong to save. 
for all those who have gone down to the sea in ships. All these words so very familiar to us, even as the men whom we have interred this day. We pray your grace upon the souls of those who have been received into your care today and in the 75 years. We pray your blessing over the families, that they would know of your peace, your grace, your sustenance in these days. And we pray for those shipmates who survive, that they would know that what they have experienced in their lives has been a gift in your favor. They have lived into the light that you have called them to, that we would seek to serve you in the time that we have been given. So it is in the strength of your risen name we pray. Amen. moment the dark but sing choir a cappella group will now sing the name of closing remarks, I would like to especially thank all who were part of setting the stage for this internment, for the incredible Navy support, for a chaplain that has brought
seven months in preparation for this. All of this that I have learned here about internment remarks with this 75th anniversary theme that we have joined together not only to celebrate these lives but also to celebrate the 70 years of peace between our former enemy and here on this, set, this sacred ground they have been returned to their ship a war grave a memorial a tomb and yet a grief that brings new life and generates here each day. To some of the Arizona survivors, it has always been that the oil perhaps is the tears of the shoe. But for me and everyone that has their own interpretation, the oil is a reflection of duty, honor, and country. It comes up every few minutes. It continues to flow as the memory of this site has not in any way declined in the American public. So here today, we have done something historic in placing two of its sailors back. And for those Arizona crewmen that are among the audience, we honor you for being here to see your shipmates return. I often close these with these words the words of General McCarthy that these proceedings are now closed. As we close these proceedings, those of you who have attended, there will be a floral tribute. And as we uh, allow the family, all of the family to go inside, we'll just take all the rows and go as, uh, as uh, I guess, as organized as we can be and to go into that room and you can take the petals and come right out here and drop them in. I think all of us are, are amazed at uh, something else that was done, I almost forgot. This is the first time we've had a double flag folding and I would have to say that those sailors did an outstanding job in limited space. And to all of you, both Navy and Marines, that rendered honors to the family, thank you so much. All of us admire that precision, that dignity, and that is what makes up the United <coughs> States Navy. And to all the Park Service personnel that assisted in putting this together, in particular, the park rangers that were brought in to assist, and those here, for getting me through this and assisting me so that no major malfunctions were made. For Clarendon, R. Hetrick, and Seaman Anderson, we don't say goodbye. 
for they are with us here every day. These proceedings are now closed. I'll ask the choir if you can move uh, into the shrine room and the Anderson family and the Kendrick family you can proceed in for the floral tribute. Thank you very much everyone.